Hey, y'all. Uh, Dr. Tassone here, America's Holistic Gynecologist, and coming at you, Confessions of a Male Gynecologist, where I talk about all things women's health, mostly focusing on hormones, advocacy, um, disease processes that affect your life on a daily basis. And today, I wanted to recap a, a, a podcast that I've done in the past because it's been, gosh, almost two years now since I've been doing these podcasts and we're getting close to number 100, which is totally awesome. But I get asked this question almost daily and I've talked about it on Insta stories. I've talked about it on Instagram. I've, it's on YouTube. I, I've done this ad nauseum, but it does bear repeating because so many women ask me about lab testing. It's in my book, The Hormone Balance Bible. I have a whole chapter on it where I talk about what to test, why to test, and how to test. And so what I'd like to do today is just recap and go through this. Now, it may not be the longest podcast ever, but what I have found is that we are all consumers here. And the problem is we're consuming in short bursts. That's why we love TikTok. So this will be somewhat shortened. But first of all, let's talk about the three different types of ways to test hormones. There's blood or serum, saliva or urine. Now, it used to be forever that the only way we could do testing would be urine and blood. Uh, saliva came in, you know, in the last probably decade or so. So here's the thing. I had a patient uh, ask me uh, today, I went to the pharmacy and the pharmacist told me I should have my hormones checked by saliva. I'm going to go on record. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Salivary testing for hormones is complete trash. You're going to find that the people that usually recommend salivary testing do it for a reason. They do it because they can order it because they don't need a medical license. They do it because they make money. They up charge the test. Salivary testing is completely and utterly worthless with the exception of cortisol testing. It will not give you accurate results. It has never ever been shown to be reliable or reproducible. It does not show you what is in your blood. And I'll tell you why. Some people secrete hormones in their saliva differently than others. If you ate something, if you didn't eat something, if it was hot, if it was cold, it can mess up the test. It's just not a reliable test. So I think it's a total waste of money. There are much better things you can spend your money on, different types of supplements, different lab testing, things like that. So please, please, please don't get salivary testing done. So that leaves us with urine and blood. Blood testing, very accurate because it's in your blood. Okay. However, it does have some limitations. One is it takes, um, it only tells us what's in your blood the second that that needle is in your arm. So it's a, it's like a Polaroid for those of you that are younger. Polaroids are cameras that used to actually print the picture right away. So it's basically a picture of where you are at that point in time in the process. It doesn't tell you tomorrow or, you know, six hours later. Also with the um with serum or blood if you're putting your cream if you're on a bioidentical cream and you put the cream on your arms and they draw the blood through the cream the the numbers could be skewed if you are on a sublingual trochee or a, a tablet then you want to do your tablet in the morning and you want to check your blood in the afternoon because you don't want to check your blood right after you take the tablet because it's gonna, your numbers are going to be through the roof because it absorbs all of a sudden. Same thing with if they put the needle through the cream, it's going to seem abnormally high. Um, the good thing about blood also is it's usually covered by your insurance. Uh, I can order all the blood tests that I order if you don't have insurance for probably around $200, so it doesn't have to be super expensive either. And you get the lab results pretty quickly. Sometimes testosterone takes a little bit longer to get those results back, but three to five days at the most. Urinary testing is a little bit different. Urinary testing is um, a 24-hour picture. 
So it's definitely going to give you more data. It will also tell you uh, different markers. It will tell you metabolites, say of estrogen, testosterone. It will check your cortisol, your melatonin, and organic acid testing. That uh, will give you a lot more data. The problem with urine testing is the results can take three to four weeks to get back. You have to collect it, which is a little bit cumbersome. And the test's going to run anywhere from $350 to $450. And you're going to get people interpreting those that sometimes don't know what they're doing. Because the companies that make these urine tests have decided they're going to sell it to anybody. And the problem that I have with that is that you have women out there either checking themselves and then they don't know what to do with the information or you have providers out there like that aren't mds that or that do this because they have some special where they include the test and the interpretation for six hundred dollars but then i'll see them on facebook group chats saying oh this is my first test i don't know what i'm doing can somebody walk me through these results and they've charged you six hundred dollars for this expert interpretation so really be careful with who you're getting these tests done with and make sure that there's somebody that knows what they're doing so those are the different types of tests uh to suffice i would say either blood or urine i would say in my practice 90 percent of the patients that i treat use just blood um, because you rarely need the other test and the problem also with urine is that you can't check really uh, thyroid or vitamin D. So you still have to get blood drawn for those anyways. All right. So now let's talk about the different types of tests. And we'll start with blood. Blood testing, I would always recommend that you have as a basic estradiol free and total testosterone with a sex hormone binding globulin, DHEA, vitamin D, thyroid stimulating hormone, free T3, free T4, thyroid peroxidase antibodies. I am not a big fan of reverse T3. I don't think it really helps the cause and I just don't think it's worth ordering. However, if you want to order it and it's something you really want, I'll throw it in there. I'll also sometimes throw in some metabolic labs if I have a patient that wants to lose some weight and those labs can be um, comprehensive metabolic profile, CBC, which checks your blood count, uh, fasting insulin, fasting glucose. Um, and then sometimes I'll throw in some inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein um, and um, homocysteine, things like that. So there's different labs you can draw. Now, um, you can draw all those. You can draw some of those. Um, they all have their place depending on your end goal and where you want to go. But I would say the basic hormones are the first ones I talked about. Estradiol, free and total testosterone with a sex hormone binding globulin, DHEA, thyroid stimulating hormone, free T3, free T4, TPOA. Um, I don't think you need to order metabolites. I see patients come in sometimes and they'll have estrone, they'll have estriol. It's really not helpful for 99% of the population. Uh, I think that sometimes labs will package these things together so they can charge a little bit more. I sometimes find the pseudo experts out there will order them because they can sell you some sort of a supplement. But suffice it to say, in a majority of cases, those things just, just are completely unnecessary and not something you need to do. Um, if you look at the urine testing for women, uh, and men for that matter, it will do all of the metabolites, okay? So the metabolites aren't unimportant, but I'm saying that for a majority of the patients, they just simply aren't massively important. Like you don't need to do metabolites if you want to do hormone replacement. I think for women that might have an extensive history or family history of breast cancer or a personal history of breast cancer, maybe they want to know the metabolism of their estrone. But for the most part, in general, you just don't need these expensive tests. Hormone replacement does not need to be expensive. It just needs to be done correctly. And so what, what I see is that women, first of all, will either get What's funny is from the doctor's vantage point, most of my colleagues won't order anything. So you have that extreme, or if they do, they'll order 
the minimal, the basic levels, have, that's all they'll order. They won't order extensive panels at all. Then you have on the other side of the spectrum, the alternative healthcare professionals who will order everything under the sun because to them, it looks better if they order a bunch of garbage, even if they don't know what to order. And second, they will use it to sell a bunch of expensive supplements that you don't necessarily need. So keep that in mind. I mean, be a be an informed consumer, get the things that you want done and make sure that, you know, you're also getting a fair shake. You don't have to walk out of somebody's office or out of their consult with seven hundred dollars in um, supplements. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, keep in mind, hormone replacement is also maybe forty to sixty dollars a month for the compounded cream and things like that. So. That's kind of the down and dirty of hormone testing that I wanted to just kind of go through. Uh, again, to reiterate, I think blood is beautiful. I think blood is easy. It's covered by insurance. If it's not covered by insurance and the pharma or the Quest, LabCorp, and those are telling you it's two thousand dollars, I can order it for two hundred bucks, super cheap, through the same labs. We now have a consortium agreement with a lot of these lab companies through full scripts where they have gotten the prices down by about one by about nine tenths so you're paying about one tenth of the cost if you just went to the lab to order um keep in mind that the dutch test costs the doctor's office 250 to 300 dollars. that's the 24-hour urine screen so if you are doing a visit with someone and they're telling you it's 600 dollars that means they're charging you $350 for the interpretation of that test, which for most of the people that are doing the testing, they aren't worth it. Um, they just aren't worth $350 because like I said, I see them on the back end in all these group chats asking other people that don't know what they're doing, how to interpret tests. So just be an informed consumer, You know, ask these people how, ma how many Dutch tests they do, uh, ask them why they're not drawing blood. Ask them if they can draw blood. Some of them don't have a license, so they can't draw blood. And they will make it sound like blood testing is bad, but it's because they can't order it. And if they could, they would, believe me. So uh, again, uh, on the back end, for those of you that want me to repeat it, the testing that I would start with, the basic testing for hormones, estradiol, free and total testosterone with sex hormone binding globulin, DHEA, vitamin D, thyroid stimulating hormone, free T3, free T4, and thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Lastly, I want to talk about this concept of optimal lab levels. I just saw it today. A friend of mine posted a guidebook that she has coming out on the optimal levels. It's a made up thing. There is no such thing as optimal because we're all different. Okay. We, I don't have the same optimal as you. So let's say this individual put out that free T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. Let's say the range on the lab is 2.2 to 4.4. Okay. She puts out that the optimal level is 3.0 to 4.0. Okay, that's fine. Let's say you come back at 2.7. That's not optimal per her guidebook. However, let's say I bump you up to 3.2, which is now technically in the optimal range. But I can't tell you how many women I've seen that this happens to where you bump them up to 3.2 and they have heart palpitations, they feel anxious, irritable, headaches. And it's because for them, that's not optimal. That's too much for them. So this whole concept of optimal is made up. It's made up to sell programs. It's made up to make people feel smarter than they really are or that they're relevant because somehow they've figured out that this is optimal. And and it's a it's a myth. It's it's a myth because the optimal level for you is the level where you feel the best. And I hate it when I have patients that come in that think they have to have their labs at a certain point because this is what they read on Instagram when the reality is they feel great, but they're frustrated because it's not optimal. So let's get that word out. 
There is no such thing as optimal. There is just where you feel the best. So let's, you know, let's remember that and let's kind of, you know, keep that under wraps. The, the, the other thing I forgot this lab, the, one of the labs that you should draw with a metabolic profile for somebody that's trying to lose weight, whether you're using dihydroberberine or metformin or fentiramine or the injectable GLP ones is that you want to um, check a hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is a measurement of your glucose control for the last, say, 90 days. So it gives you a good down and dirty on how well your body uh, deals with sugar and glucose, carbohydrates, but it also um, tells you if you're pre-diabetic. I just had a lady yesterday who has a significant family history of diabetes. She's um, now pre-diabetic, but she has a normal um, BMI and a good body weight. But this is for her genetics. So we want to get working on this kind of stuff now rather than later so that she can be proactive. So again, um, blood testing, I would say first. Urine testing, I would say second. I would never do saliva except for cortisol. And usually I only check cortisol if I have a patient that I'm working with that I just can't get uh, better and she's just not feeling the way she wants to feel, even though we've tried um, hormonal management for, you know, two or three visits, I've tried to tinker, we've checked labs again, and I just can't get it right. Well, then I would probably check saliva for cortisol and you can buy salivary cortisol testing on Amazon for about a hundred dollars. It will usually check DHEA and cortisol. The reason that you can't really check cortisol in blood is because you have to check it four times throughout the day and nobody's going to go have their blood drawn four times, especially one of them is, is at nighttime. So really difficult to do that, which is why salivary testing is, is much better. And I would say salivary testing for cortisol over urine simply because it's cheaper and you can just do the cortisol test. With the urine, you usually have to do everything. And if you want everything, that's great. And then you can get the cortisol done. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate lab testing. It's a super important topic. I talk about it in my book, The Hormone Balance Bible. You can get The Hormone Balance Bible on Amazon. Uh, it is um, currently about 50% off. I think it's $14 or $15. It's 500 pages. I talk about all this stuff again, lab testing. I talk about each of the different hormones. And then I break down the top 12 hormone imbalances in women. And I break those down into storylines so that it's easier to understand. And then I bring in my Shines protocol, which is a six-step process to fix your hormones with a spiritual practice, hormonal management, infaceutical information, nutrition, exercise, and proper supplementation. So get the book, get started. There's a quiz. There's a QR code on page 14 where you can take the quiz to see what your archetype is, or you can call me at 512-956. 0296. I'm in Austin, Texas, but I also am licensed in about 32 states, so I can see people around the country. I don't take insurance, but I'm more than happy to help in any way possible. I will catch you next week. You can find me on Instagram at Sean Tasson, MD. You can find me on uh, YouTube. I do YouTube live videos all the time. Uh, my page is my name, Sean Tassone. I would love to see you there. I take Q&As on Instagram on Tuesdays, and I usually will take questions every day on YouTube. I'm only on there for about 10 minutes. I usually talk about a topic of the day, and then I'll answer questions at the end. So if you have any burning women's health questions, feel free to follow me, subscribe, do all the things you need to do so that you get the notices when I'm online. You have a great week.